Well, good evening and welcome to Wednesday Evening Prayer. We're glad that you've joined us. We have been doing a series on the Song of Solomon, and for many of you might have been expecting chapter 5 today. But after looking at the weekly readings from the Daily Lectionary, I decided maybe a little change-up would be good for us. As we gather this evening, let us pause. Let's take a breath. Let's place our hearts and minds in the presence of God and prepare them for worship. Let us breathe. Peace be with you. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you called light into being, and you set light in the sky to govern night and day. In a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, you led your people into freedom. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And with all your creatures, we give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm this evening is Psalm 87. On the holy mountain stands the city God has founded. The Lord loves the gates of Zion. More than all the dwellings of Jacob, glorious things are spoken of you, O city of our God. I count Egypt and Babylon among those who know me. Behold, Philistia, Tyre, and Ethiopia, in Zion they were born. Of the city it shall be said, everyone was born in Zion, and the Most High shall sustain the city. In rolling the nations, the Lord records, there also were born there. The singers and the dancers will say, All my fresh springs are in you. Let us pray. Compassionate God, your son wept over Jerusalem, and he established the new Jerusalem firmly upon rock and made it the mother of the faithful. Make us rejoice in your church and grant that all people may be reborn into the freedom of your spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Our first reading comes from Isaiah. For I know their works and their thoughts. I am coming to gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. And I will set a sign among them. From them I will send survivors to the nations to Tarshish, Put, and Lud, which draw the bow, to Tobai and Javan, to the coastlands far away, that have not heard of my fame or seen my glory. And they shall declare my glory among the nations. They shall bring all your kindred from all the nations as an offering to the Lord, on horses and in chariots and in litters and on mules and on dromedaries to my holy mountain Jerusalem says the Lord, just as the Israelites bring a grain offering in a clean vessel to the house of the Lord. And I also take some of them as priests and as Levites, says the Lord. For as the new heaven and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your descendants and your name remain. From new moon to new moon and from Sabbath to Sabbath, all flesh shall come to worship before me says the Lord. In a reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. When Jesus had come down from the mountain, great crowds followed him, and there was a leper who came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I do choose. Be made clean. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed, then Jesus said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. 
When he entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, appealing to him and saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, in terrible distress. He said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion answered, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority with soldiers under me, and say to one, Go, and he goes, and to another, Come, and he comes, and to my slave, Do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard it, he was amazed and said to those who followed him, Truly I tell you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west and will eat with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. While the heirs of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And to the centurion Jesus said, Go, let it be done for you according to your faith. The servant was healed in that hour. These readings, as a reminder for those of you who might be joining in for the first time, these readings point back, Wednesday readings point back to the readings that we had on Sunday, and they share the same themes. The theme that outside, that the welcoming of outsiders, the welcoming of those into the midst of the community is the reason that Jesus came into this world to fulfill what God had promised, that all of God's people will gather together on God's holy mountain and all will rejoice and all will share in the banquet, that all will be welcomed into God's kingdom. That's good news. That's tremendous news, especially to us and to others who may have been on the outside, who might have felt like they didn't count, like they didn't belong. Sadly, so often we find ourselves short-sighted in this. We think that we're, only, we're the only Christians or we're the only people with faith. In a recent conversation with a friend of mine, I kind of lamented to her and said, you know, it's really sad because if people really understood how big the church really is, it would blow their minds. We don't really have a concept of how big the church is. Now, granted, we say it every week, right? We profess our faith in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We say those words in the Nicene Creed. But we tend not to take very we tend not to take time and think about what it is. Now, many of us might hear that word Catholic and we think, oh, you know, We don't really, that Catholic thing, mm, not too sure about that. That sounds like it has to do with popes and going to Mass. For some of us, that might even have this feeling of, you know, I I did the Catholic thing. I don't really want to profess faith in it. It's important when we talk about that word Catholic, we're not talking about uh, a particular religious tradition. And in this particular case, what, mo- what many people in the West, that is many of the people in our communities, are familiar with is Roman Catholics. As in the Catholic Church that is headed by Pope Francis in Rome. And is one of the largest Christian traditions in the world. Now, what we're talking about here is the word Catholic in its original sense in the Greek. That is, the Greek word katalikos, universal. It's something that we profess faith in each and every week, that we believe in one holy Catholic church. That the church is is something that Christ has given to us, that God has given to us as a place, as a reality, as a truth, that extends far beyond just our own expression of it. But it engages in a huge diversity, which welcomes all people into this community, which welcomes all people into Christ. 
that it doesn't demand in that cult, in that change that you that everybody do the same thing all the time that people worship and and do the same acts and even to a certain degree maybe not even believe the same things in fact even in our own lutheran tradition in the augsburg confession we're reminded that the only thing that is really necessary for the unity of the church is that the gospel is proclaimed and the sacraments are administered. How that happens, it doesn't lay it out. There are certainly things within our Lutheran tradition that we retain, which oftentimes gets us kind of being accused of looking very Catholic, as in Roman Catholic. But go to any of the various Lutheran churches or any Lutheran church in this country or abroad, and there's a wide expression of how that gets expressed, of how it is that they live out and practice their faith. It's really beautiful. Because in the church, in the very large church, we get a glimpse of this holy mountain, of this opportunity, of this place that Jesus calls us to and gathers us to. We get to see how really big the church is. And that's something to get excited about. Because it is only but a foretaste of the awesomeness that is coming. We get a church that speaks so many different languages. A church that embraces nationalities. A church that is not limited by borders. But a church that reaches out and embraces the world. A church that is so big that there's enough room for everybody at its table. We cannot lose this vision of what it means to be church in the world today. We cannot become so myopic in our view of church, believing that ours is the only way to believe and to hold true. Because when we read the Gospels, we recognize something very cool is happening here. For the outcast, the leper is healed, and the centurion's servant is healed. That is, that in them... Any kind of brokenness is wrapped up and taken into Christ and granted and given to them freedom. Jesus didn't ask them, didn't push back on them, but welcomed them into the healing that he has come into the world to offer. That healing which ultimately comes down to the forgiveness of sins. That is anything that separates us from God, from each other, from the world in which God made. That in Christ, wholeness and completeness is granted and given to us. And it's given to us freely. It's given to us in the hopeful expectation that one day the world in all of its division and dividingness and its lack of, of embracing its own diversity, will one day find itself united on God's holy mountain. And when we get to and when we get there, when we get to that mountaintop, when God leads us home, we get to see God's glory. We get to see God in who God is. We get to count the nations, the languages, the people. We get to see how big God really is. We get embraced in that. We get to be embraced by the love of God, which gathers all people, which brings all people in, and where there's enough for everyone. Where all God's people live in the promise of God's mercy and love. 
What a great day that will be. But it's not just a day that's far off. No, it's a day that where the church gets to, it's a day that is now, the day is near. For the Lord has come to us. The Lord has come to us in Jesus Christ, proclaims to you the forgiveness of sins, not just for your own sake, but for the sake of your neighbor. It's a day where we get to live that out now. Where we get to share in the healing ministry of Jesus. By reaching out to a neighbor. By welcoming the outcast. And by loving each other. By embracing the differences that God has implanted and given to each of us. Knowing that in that diversity, there is unity in Christ Jesus. For that is what it means to be one holy Catholic church a glimpse of the kingdom of God, a glimpse of God's love for all people, a glimpse that welcomes the stranger, the poor, the widowed, the orphaned, a glimpse of a God who extends beyond the boundaries that we set up and welcomes you, as you are, into the eternal joy of the kingdom of God. Thanks be to God. Each week, we share in Mary's song in the evening. And we listen to the mighty things that God has done for us. And we look forward to the great day when this will be fulfilled. We say in Mary's song called the Magnificat, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations shall call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham, and to his descendants forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We gather our prayers this evening, presenting them to God. We take a moment and enter into a time of prayer. We pray this evening for the church, for the Holy, that the Holy Spirit may move within it, crossing borders, languages, and nationalities to gather all people to see God's glory. We pray for the leaders in this world, in our nation, state and local leaders. And we pray that they... Work for unity among God's people. Ending practices that divide one against another and harming those who are most vulnerable in our world. We pray for the healing of the world. That at the word of Jesus, all will be healed and made whole. We pray for those 
who are faithfully departed. And remember those who are faithfully departed. Who are now gathered at God's holy mountain. That by their witness to God's glory, our hope in the promised resurrection is strengthened. For all these things and the things on our hearts, we commend them to you, O Lord. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously protected us today. We ask you to forgive us all our sins, where we have done wrong, and graciously to protect us tonight. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. And we pray using the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you once again for joining us for Wednesday evening prayer. We'll be back again next week, maybe with the fifth chapter of the Song of Solomon. Look forward to that. Until then, you're missed, you're loved, and we'll look forward to seeing each other again. Receive the blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the love and knowledge of God and God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and present with you always. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you.